Hey guys, today we're starting a new series focused on CPU cooler reviews. This series will cover different setups from lower end requirements to higher end and we have standardized our build to keep results as true to life and consistent as possible. We will start our adventure with an air cooler from PC Cooler, the CPS RZ620. This is their first entry to the high end coolers and it's priced at 75 US dollars. While this may be a first for PC Cooler, I think it's not a new cooler. More on that a bit later on. We'll break out this video into three sections. First, we'll cover the physical aspects, then performance and wrap up with some feedback. Timestamps will be provided, so feel free to jump around to the section that is most interesting for you. Let's first go through what you get for your money. And right off the bat, I'm really impressed with the packaging and contents. The cooler is well secured in a box with plenty of protection. Inside, you'll find accessories compatible for AMD and Intel systems, thermal paste, and a handy inline fan controller offering three speed modes. 1800 RPM, 2200 RPM, and a PWM range from 500 to 2000. I also really like the included simple manual. It covers everything you need to know, starting with the crucial step of removing the plastic protective film from the bottom of the cooler, something that I still occasionally overlook. While I would have preferred pre-applied thermal paste for convenience, applying it yourself isn't overly complicated. This cooler itself features designed with six heat pipes, each six millimeter in diameter, and comes equipped with 120 mil fans. It has a total height of 158 millimeters, ensuring compatibility with most cases. The installation process is straightforward. For our setup, we used AM5 socket from AMD, which required inserting the screws and then attaching the bracket. The clip bracket has a little arrow indicating which way you should be pointing. The arrow leads towards the CPU. You do need to hold the bracket as it has a tendency of leaning down. Once the bracket is in place, apply the thermal paste and then securely screw on the cooler. For the fan installation, you will need to use the little metal clips, which personally I'm not really a big fan of, as I tend to hurt myself while using them, but it is a cost-effective solution. Fans here actually have some nice features. They're pretty standard anti-vibration pads on the corners, as well as the orientation guides. These are useful for new builders, so they know which way the airflow will go. The fan cables can be easily daisy-chained, and I recommend doing them before installing them to the cooler, and then connecting them to the motherboard. It will save you some hassle with cable management later on. When it comes to RAM clearance, our test bench is using 43mm RAM, and it tightly fits over the top of the RAM without adjusting the fan. But since it's using metal clips, if needed, you can always adjust it up. Do bear in mind that it will reduce the airflow and thus performance. This brings us to the coolest performance, where we have a series of graphs to share. We're also looking for some feedback on what aspects you would like us to focus on in the future videos. So please let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, consider subscribing to stay up to date with the latest content. For tests, we'll be using three different power profiles, low, medium, and high. The low profile is approximately 77 watts, which represents either a low-end chip or higher-end chip with lower core utilization, like some single-threaded games. Medium is approximately 90 watts, and it represents a more mid-range chip, for example, the new AMD non-X chips at stock. And lastly, we have the high profile, wishing about 220 watts, which represents a high-end system handling multi-threaded workloads. We decided not to go for the extreme high for the time being, as it requires a completely different setup. With this in mind, let's jump into the results. Our comparison includes a variety of coolers, ranging from the stock AMD Wraith to more high-end options like the ones from Be Quiet series. In low power test, with noise normalized fans set to 40 dBA, most coolers hover at 25 to 26 Celsius range above ambient temperature, with the stock cooler being a notable exception. This load is clearly not a problem for these coolers, but let's check out the same test with fans set to 100%. When blasting the fans, here we see that the RZ620 emerges as a standout, achieving the lowest temperature at 24.1 Celsius above ambient, but also recording the highest noise level at 46.3 dBA. This performance aligns well with this design, which essentially brute forces air through the cooler. However, I'd say this is above my comfort level, and I advise against setting the fan speed this high under normal circumstances. If we look at the rest of the coolers, we see that they perform only slightly worse, but at considerably lower noise levels, especially Be Quiet Dark Rock Elite, with Quiet Mode enabled. That is almost half as loud, but is also around $40 more expensive. Next up is 90 watt power load, and here with noise normalized fans, we see slight shift in positions, and now RZ620 is sandwiched between the two Be Quiet Towers, both of which managed to save below 40 dBA noise floor. 
the temperature difference between RZ620 and the top performing cooler is less than 1 degree, indicating a relatively minor disparity in cooling efficiency. Turning the fan speed up to 100% brings the CPS cooler back up to the top and is essentially tied with Dark Rock Elite in performance mode. But it's worth noting that the difference in cooling efficiency among these coolers is quite minimal. Now, let's ramp things up to the more demanding 220 watt power load and see how these coolers manage the under real world high intensity workload. And surprise, surprise, we find that these coolers are all experiencing thermal throttling, which is understandable. While some of these coolers are rated at 260 or even 280 watts, that does not always mean they can hold that performance. Several factors come into play, such as heat distribution on the CPU. Given that CPU's small size, it creates a concentrated hotspot, making it challenging for the cooler to effectively dissipate the heat. Additionally, the conditions under which manufacturers test their coolers to arrive to these watches are not always clear. This is precisely why we conduct our tests, to provide real-world insights. Let's dig deeper to see which cooler performs better, as we can still do that. First way to check is CPU frequency, and here, when we have zoomed in on a graph, we see the CPU tries to boost past 5.1 GHz and immediately drops down. The AMD Rave Prism cooler is a clear loser here, we're leaving a bunch of performance on the table, but the rest of the coolers do a reasonable job. Have a look at the third quadrant, where we see that the Dark Rock Elite using performance mode slightly edges out these capacitors, but only by narrow margin. To better quantify which cooler is most effectively dissipating heat, we turn to our average power graph. This graph is particularly useful since all workloads are identical. It shows the average power consumption during the benchmark. The logic here is straightforward. The highest performing cooler would experience the least amount of thermal throttling and as a result, sustain better load. In this example, in the noise normalized test, the RZ620 came in lowest out of all the big tower coolers with about six watt difference to the cooler from Montec. When we increase the fan speed to maximum, the performance gap narrows and RZ620 positions itself in the middle of the pack. It is still a significant improvement from the stock cooler, but it becomes a bit of a mixed bag when it comes to the rest of the coolers, until you check for the pricing. The Be Quiet coolers, although offering superior performance, come with a significantly higher price tag. On the other hand, the Monte cooler delivering comparable performance to the RZ620 is actually slightly more affordable, which leads us to our opinion. I think PC Cooler has made a good attempt at mid-range dual tower cooler. It competes well with the more expensive alternatives in terms of cooling efficiency, although it does fall short in acoustics department. For users who aren't constantly pushing their PC to the limit, this cooler would be a suitable choice. If the installation process is simple and straightforward, complemented by sufficiently detailed instructions. However, there is an elephant in the room. The striker resemblance to Deepcool's AK620 cooler but I will leave that for the companies to fight about. What do you guys think of this cooler? Would you consider getting it? If so, we'll leave a link down in the description below so you can check it out further. We hope you found this review helpful. If you did, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe for more content like this. We'll see you guys in the next one.